Welcome everybody, this talk is going to be about Adem. Adem is Dutch for breathe and this project has something to do with air quality and breathing. Uh, my name is Dag Wiers, but we only have 23 minutes, so I don't, I'm not going to talk about myself today. I'm not going to talk about TimeLab, but TimeLab is a fab lab in Ghent, where I live. So that's the only thing you need to know. It looks like this. Uh, we have lots of stuff to play with. Um, we have a nice logo, and the logo is special in the sense that the you, you know what this means. Uh, it's like ele electronic schemes, uh, but it also includes the, the, a bird. Like in the mine, in, in the coal mines, they used to have birds with them to monitor air quality. And if a bird died, then there was something wrong with the air quality. And that's what actually we want to present, uh, represent as well. So the, the Adam project, what we would like to do is uh, collect raw data, in, in the first instance, raw data of air quality uh, information. And we are focusing on fine dust, because fine dust is uh, something where we don't have a lot of information, in the sense that we do have some information, but usually it's um, on specific places where they have the expensive equipment to, to monitor. And in Ghent, for instance, there are only two places in the whole, of Ghent, the whole city of Ghent uh, where they are measuring quality of the air. And then the location of these measure, measurement devices is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very strange that where they are put, they are put in a park and stuff like that, which doesn't represent necessarily the, the, the real quality of what you would like to know. Uh, we think that air quality only makes sense. It's like the, in, in nuclear reactors, you have this personal device that actually measures what your what you're exposed to. So what we would like to do is have something similar uh, in, in the sense that we can make something that tells you where you are, what the, the air quality is. Obviously it will not be exactly because it's, it's very dependent on uh, lots of things, but if we can collect a lot of information, and we're, try we're going to do it by having a device that you can mount on your bike, um, if we can collect a lot of information during the day, uh, and we can, we can use that information together, we can enhance that information because we get a lot of that information. Uh, we can maybe get, uh, we can maybe collect information that while the, the components we use may not give you exact information, because we get so much information we can, we can get better results from it. That's what we want. And we want to get raw information in the first place, because then maybe data scientists can use that information to, to, to put it on a map and do things with it that we didn't envision. So, uh, most important thing today is the, the device itself. So I'm not going to talk about the, the health. Obviously, uh, fine dust is only one of the things you can measure about air quality. But it's one of the things that, like I said, there is not that much information of it. And the quality of that information is it's, it's, uh, debatable. Also, for fine dust, the, the World Health Organization and the European Union, they have um, also debatable uh, levels that are uh, that are uh, acceptable for instance in europe uh, the first 35 days that are measured that exceed a certain level are not taken into account so that's a really strange way of measuring things because uh, makes no sense so you can have very high levels of uh, of fine dust, for instance, and those are not counted for the f 35 days. Only the 36 days is taken into account. Very strange, but it's because obviously fine dust is a problem. Uh, <coughs> okay, so there are different kinds of fine dust. You have uh, PM10, which is 10 micrometers. You have PM2.5 and, and PM1. Um, and all of these have a different kind of, uh, uh, of yeah, how do you say that? Uh, it's it's it sense of, of, of how it's dangerous. The, the PM10 is, um, you, you can breathe it in, but it doesn't go as deep as, for instance, PM2.5. Those can get into your bloodstream, if it, even if it's, if it's getting worse, uh, ultrafine particles, they go directly into your bloodstream, even uh, not directly to the lungs, but even uh, by other means. Um, Fine dust may not be uh, caused by human activity alone. You also have fine dust, obviously, that the nature produces. So fine dust is not necessarily uh, always related to uh, to us, to 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 cars, to to uh, heating uh, central heating systems and stuff like that. Uh, but 
it's one of the indicators that air quality is not that good. So yeah, Ghent, uh, the, the nice city of Ghent. Uh, we have lots of students, lots of bikes, a lot of people use bikes. I think in Belgium, uh, Ghent is uh, is probably the the, the most uh, the city where people use the bike the most. But we also unfortunately have a highway going almost directly into the city, and I'm living up there at the end of the of the of that highway. So I have a personal uh, reason for doing this project. So. Not that important, probably you all have these concerns where you're living, especially in cities or near highways. Um, like I said, uh, yearly averages or daily averages don't mean a thing. It's the, it's, it's the exposure you get your, uh, for yourself that makes a lot of sense. The things that we would like to get is that we have a good indication when, for instance, it's good to open the windows to, to clean the air in your house. Uh, sometimes you know from the weather, uh, the, 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 the weather announcements that the air quality is bad, but sometimes it it's related to something closer to you. Um, so it would be nice to be able on a map to tell when it's best to open your windows. People do it usually later in the evening, but that's in the winter that's, that's worse because uh, the central heating systems, everybody's burning gas or, or whatever, or wood, and then the, the air quality is even worse than during the day when there's just traffic. So it, it really depends on, you, you have to measure in-house and, and out of the house to be able to know if it's better or not. Um, the device, this is one of the first uh, designs where, where all the components were put together. It changed a bit, so we're going to see what, what we had to change, but this is how it looked, how it would be put together um, in the first uh, version. Um, our idea is to have an open device, open hardware, uh, open firmware, and also the, the how the device is put together, that's also, that also will be open. We already have uh, played with that as well, because it's a track next to the, the technical part. Uh, we're using as much as possible open source libraries. I don't have to tell that here, because everybody's doing that here at this place. Um, we tried to make it as cheap as possible. And if we have time, I will show you the bill of material. Uh, I hope we can, get, we can make a device like this for 40 euros. Um, Real devices that, that measure it in a scientific way, they easily cost 1,000 euros or more. So uh, this would, would make a difference for us. This is also an earlier design. I didn't make a picture of, of the latest one, but uh, this is basically how it works. We use the, the SparkFun ESP8266. Uh, um, we, we so the sensor at the top is the, is the fine dust sensor. It can measure two and a half micrometers and one micrometer uh, particulates matter that is in between those uh, in that range. Uh, I will show you how that works later on. Um, there is a GPS in there because we obviously have to locate where we are. Um, we have a buzzer, uh, we have a light uh, to give some indication to the user itself because we think that we get more users if the users have feedback themselves as well, if they have a personal interest. Um, and then we have a humidity sensor, temperature is also in all of these, accelerometer to see when we're moving, that's important for the device as well, and um, barometer, uh, it's the, what do you call it, air pressure uh, sensor as well. Um, and why are we collecting that information as well? It's because that might influence the information you get from the, from the air quality, well, the, the, the fine dust sensor. We don't know yet what the relation is. Well, we do a bit on scientific papers that are written about the sensor we're using, but we want to uh, be able to, to verify ourselves uh, based on raw data as well. And obviously based on uh, calibrated material. So. Like I said, we have a microcontroller, which is the SparkFun ESP8266. The reason why we took that one is because it has Wi-Fi. Uh, that's the <laughs> most important thing in this case. Because in the earlier designs, we were thinking about using Bluetooth, but that's a lot more of a hassle. Um, like I said, the fine dust meter, we did, um, we did um, try a lot of sensors. I think we bought five or six sensors. Uh, also, the, 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 there is a better one than the PPD42NS. Uh, which is more expensive, obviously, but we didn't see that there was that it was uh, much better in the results that we wanted to have. Um, so, what is important to say in the latest design, we have uh, started to use a second microcontroller. 
to be able to convert from the GPS to I2C. I'm going to come back to this, why we're doing this like this. Uh, I'm not fond of the ID, but that's the only affordable way to do it at the moment. The finder sensor is very important because it's the, the base basis of everything. Uh, one of the things I have to mention as well, we're now doing fine dust in future designs when this is all working and we have spare time. <laughs> um, we're going to probably add other uh, sensors as well because the design allows it. Uh, it's a modular design, you can add more sensors to the I2C bus, so that's, uh, that we can do as well. But we first want to, to focus on this and get something working. Um, what's important about the sensor? The sensor works by uh, sending out, or emitting infrared light we have uh, a lens that uh, and, and a sensor where the light is being reflected to um, and it counts well it, it, it gets it gets pulses based on what the sensor uh, receives and the sensor itself already has some fine-tuning well it you see that here it has two potentiometers to able to tweak it but it's normally tweaked at the, the factory so we don't have to to, to use that um, the air goes in here, there is a resistor to heat up the air, so you have an airflow for um, standalone devices. In our case, we're probably not going to use the, the resistor, and we're going to use some uh, effect to have an intake of air automatically so that we don't need the resistor, which will save the on battery. Um, what do I have to tell about this as well? Well, the, the PPD60NS is, does have two sensors, if I'm correct. Um, so that's, it gets better result. This does not measure black matter. That's the only problem with this sensor. The other problem with this sensor, because it doesn't reflect light, obviously. Um, the second problem with this sensor is the fact that... Um, ah, now I forgot what I wanted to say. Um, ah, yes. Um, normally in scientific um, and, and in the, the, the World Health Organization standards of acceptable levels, they measure uh, fine dust by uh, measuring the weight. Obviously, this doesn't measure weight. It only measures size of particles. And so that's one of the problems if we do it this way. It's, it's less scientific. But obviously, if you want to measure weight, you have to, you have to collect the dust and you have to weigh it and that's impossible to do in real time and that's the reason why these real devices are so expensive. There are better devices than this one using lasers and better techniques and stuff like that but those are also very expensive. Um, this one is not calibrated so the calibration is one of the things we have to do ourselves by buying calibrated uh, devices and maybe uh, based on statistics and where you are and if you pass a calibrated device we can take that into account if a bicycle, well, if, if cyclists uh, cross each other, we can take that into account if some of them have just passed a, uh, a calibrated device. Things are, uh, like this are possible, but we're not counting, uh, in this case, uh, wh the weight of the fine, fine dust, uh, uh, but we're only counting uh, particles and the sizes of particles. Then, uh, what do I have to tell as well? It's an Arduino-based framework. I don't like Arduino m myself. The IDE I don't like. I don't like the framework. Maybe it's better because it was a new release. I didn't test that yet. But we're also using Platform IO, and that's a lot easier to work with. Uh, and we do the CI testing automatically on GitHub with Platform IO. Um, components can be swapped, so that's the nice thing about the I square C bus. Um, we also want to plan to have a driver selection, so if you have different kinds of devices, you can just plug them in, and if we support them, they will be scanned automatically in this, as good as, as that is possible with the IDs. Um, we accept contributions. Um, code readable, yeah, this is all not. We have a state machine, obviously, this is already implemented. Um, and everything is actually implemented now, but the, the integration, we didn't ha do a lot of testing yet because we want to get rid of the breadboard. We want to have, we, we have two PCB designs yet, but none have been produced yet unless we have everything working on the breadboard first. But we're very close to that now. So th let me f quickly do this because this is nice because you have an idea what it does. Uh, when you start it, obviously it has to do some initialization and it d directly goes into sleep mode in the sense that it's not doing anything and everything is disabled except the accelerometer which is always on. As soon as we're moving, we go into some sort of GPS test mode where we try to get a fix for the GPS because that's not certain. And once we get a GPS fix, then we start to collect because it does not make sense to collect information if we don't know where we are. Obviously, if one of those two are gone, we go back or we go back if we don't, we're not moving. 
if you shake it, we go to, into a config mode uh, that opens a Wi-Fi access point where you can configure what are the Wi-Fi as, uh, um, credentials and what is, are the SSIDs that you're going to use for uh, connecting to Wi-Fi. We plan to have multiple so that if you cycle to well, if you if you cycle to work, then. On, at work, things are being uploaded. If you go back home, on, at home, uh, they are being <coughs> uploaded. We uh, expect that if the device is is not moving, well, not moving, it's always moving a bit, but not moving a lot. Uh, we go into Wi-Fi test mode if we have data collected. So only if we have data collected, we will see if we have Wi-Fi. If we have Wi-Fi, we test only 30, every 30 minutes or something like that. We have to see what's, what's acceptable. <laughs> then we upload, and as soon as it's uploaded, we go back into sleep. So that's that's very simple. It's it's. Uh, there are certain cases where we probably want to do things differently. If you go into a tunnel, maybe we want to only go into sleep a little bit longer. We'll wait uh, some time before we do that. Um, Okay, the current device, like I said, uh, the hardware design was done before I even joined the, the project, but things changed a bit. Uh, the components were already evaluated before I joined, so uh, that was needed, obviously, for uh, making the, the right choices. I still have seven minutes, that's fine. Um, we, we now are on our second prototype, uh, which is still breadboard based, um, which also has its own problems, because you, you know you have these cables that are not always uh, making the right connections or there is loss of uh, loss of information and things like that i'm not that technical i'm not into electronics as much as i probably should be in this po as at this point but i have a we're working in a team i'm not doing this alone so uh yeah but i'd like to learn more so um so we have a second PCB design already created, which also includes this, the second microcontroller. We also have uh, have redesigned the casing because of the connections. You, on, you only learn those things by making something and see how this would look. And, and we also made it a bit smaller. The, the, the idea is to use a standard tube size that is uh, transparent, but not too transparent. So the lights are reflected to it, um, so that we don't need to make well, it's going to be mounted on a bicycle, it could be raining, weather conditions, so we have to make sure that it is, it's properly uh, sealed. And so if you take a tube which doesn't have any openings uh, on, 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 the, on the side, then you only have to care about the, the front and the back. And uh, that's going to be 3D printed at first. Uh, we already have a design um, where everything is, fits into it. At the back we have uh, access points for uh, cables and in this, at this moment for testing stuff. And in the front there will only be something that where air gets, gets in. And that's also a, a, a worry in the sense that how will this survive extreme weather conditions or long usage? We still have to see. We have ideas about that as well, but it's too many to go into. We had a lot of issues, as usual, by these kinds of things. Um, we had too few eye opens, and that was one of the reasons to go to a second microcontroller. Um, you could solve that other, uh, in, in other ways, but by having a second microcontroller that only does the GPS, at the moment it only does the GPS, but in the future it could do other things as well, um, we can offload the, 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 the GPS uh, handling uh, on that second uh, microcontroller. That's one of the advantages. But the, w w the, the, the less uh, interesting part is the fact that we have to write two firmwares, one for that microcontroller, obviously, and they have to work together. And that was one of the other problems that we had. Uh, we also have problems with imperfect signals. One of the things is that, for instance, our sensor expects 5 volt, and at the moment we have battery that can go up to 4.2 volts, I, I think. Um, so we probably have to use a, f a, a better battery in the, in the future. We still don't know because we haven't looked at the data the sensor is collecting yet. We first want to finish it and then we want to do real testing. Um, we did obviously do some things with it, but we don't know what the effect is of only giving 3.3 volts or more, a bit more, uh, to the device. Because obviously if the light is too weak, the results will be influenced. So we have to see how that uh, how that adds up in, in the total, in the global uh, picture. Um, what can I tell as well? We had some issues with the ESP uh, stability, but also the fact that the, because it has to give time to the Wi-Fi, uh, uh, yeah, the, the integrated Wi-Fi stuff, that uh, for I2C communications, we, we had a 
a lot of problems that we didn't understand. We found lots of people that were having the same problems and then we found what the issue was and we could fix it. We had to change the I2C uh, uh, library a bit to make it work um, in a stable way. Some other stuff, but it doesn't really matter. I still, want to, I still have three and a half minutes, so let's see. Uh, there are lots of things we would like to do. Uh, we have lots of organizations that are very interested in this, uh, in this, uh, the, the possibilities that are, that we have with this device. Um, collecting road quality information by if you have bumps, and a lot of bicycles have the same bumps at the same location, we could uh, probably do something with it. Um, more air quality sensors, like I said. Uh, obviously, when you have a moving device, we could also make a stationary device. It's a little bit different because we may not include the GPS, but we still want to know where we are, so we still have to see how we would do that. But it would be nice to have this as well. Obviously, if it's outside of the house, we do want to have that information. If it's inside of the house, obviously, we don't want to that information. But maybe we may still collect it and show it to the user uh, because the raw data is not usable by normal people because it's, you have to see that in the global picture of all the data that we measure, both the calibrated stuff and the non-calibrated stuff. But the stationary devices, if we have, um, if they are spread out through the city, it would be nice to calibrate those maybe ourselves from time to time so that those are also giving a better uh, indication of the air quality and those can be used when uh, cyclists pass by. Um, we also want to co correlate air quality with weather conditions so that in the future we can also predict based on the predictions of, of uh, what the weather is going to be, what also the, the air quality will be based on, obviously, if it's a normal day, a weekend, and whatever. Um, because air quality, like I said, it's important to do that close to where you are, because it doesn't matter if there are only two uh, collectors where, where that information is gathered. It, it's, it, it's, no, it's of no use. It depends what you are breathing in. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is that um, I lost that track as well. <laughs> um, there's a reason why I was going into that as well, but I forgot. Um, billboards showing real time. Yeah, there's also some interest for using um, ad advertisement space that is underused to give that sort of information as well, which would be nice. And in a train station, um, that, that we could also display that information in between, uh, in between. Because one of the things that's important is that you can. Um, get people, um, the people are interested in th these matters as well. Oh, and we have one minute left, so the demo will be, I can give a demo later on if you're interested, uh, we'll go somewhere else. Um, if you're inter interested to help, we're looking for more people to join as well. Now that the device is almost finished, we need obviously people that also want to test, drive around, help with integrating and stuff like that. Um, like, Myself, no prior knowledge is required, and you learn a lot. Um, okay, this is the information. If you're interested, take a picture now. The, the slides will be up somewhere. The video will be up somewhere. Um, let me quickly see if there is uh, something. A, lo a lot of other projects are going on as well. We learn from that as well because I'm. It may seem that I'm a little bit superficial uh, over all this stuff, but it's based on other projects as well. It's just that, that we don't have a lot of time. Yes, questions, quickly. Yeah. Uh, I've looked up online the, uh, the data center from Samsung, and uh, it's <coughs> Be by five volts, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, we know, yeah. So Can you repeat the question? Kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. Do you want any kind of accuracy on your measurement? Indeed, we know, yeah. So the question was that uh, the data sheets say that five volt is needed. Uh, there can be 10% uh, uh, difference and we know that there is an issue but it's possible that the information we collect when it's lower also relates to the, the, the output we get but we want to have five volt for this definitely yeah that's why we're looking for d different batteries and stuff like that so. maybe uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you we can take other questions outside so that we don't uh, shift the schedule too much obviously obviously thanks yeah. a lot for the presentation it was really